How many have ever offered a drink offering? I thought so. Neither have I. It's not like toasting, you know, something like that. It actually, and you'll find it uh, in the book of Numbers, you'll find it in Genesis. Uh, I think it's Jacob, when after he wrestled with the angel, he built an altar, part of his sacrifice was he poured out, he poured oil upon the altar. The drink offering was usually uh, not oil. Sometimes they poured oil out on the, on the altar, but it was usually wine. And, and in the book of Numbers, it, it gives you, for this size sacrifice, this is the size of the drink offering. Because you would never offer a drink offering alone. I don't mean without somebody standing next to you, I mean that that would be the only offering. It was always a conjunction offering. So the five offerings that were offered daily, there would be a drink offering alongside of it. And this was a, a natural and well-known thing among pagans and Christians. So regardless of whether the background of who was reading this in Philippi was a Jew or a pagan, they would both have this understanding of a drink offering, that you offered your offering, which was the main thing, you know, a burnt offering, which was a sacrifice of dedication because it was totally consumed by the flames. And it's a way of saying, Lord, I give myself totally for, to you. I dedicate myself to you. That's the, the burnt offering. Or there is the peace offering that now, Lord, you know, Paul says it in Romans, where is it? Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having peace, having been justified, we have peace with God in Christ. Yeah, we do. We have peace. When we don't just have peace like the world gives, we have His peace. And Chris and I were reading in our devotion this week, and it talks about everlasting peace. It doesn't end. We have, to, we have to worry about it ending or running out. It's peace for all times from this moment for the rest of eternity. That peace and that peace offering was a, a way of saying there's peace between us or sometimes between two people. They would jointly together offer a peace offering to signify the peace between them as witnessed by God. But the drink offering would be alongside that. And what they would do is they would take the wine and as I said, in the book of Numbers, if you do some Bible study, you can find, you know, depending upon whether it was a lamb or a goat or a bull, there was a certain amount of wine that was poured out. And for uh, the Jews, they would pour it out around the altar. For pagans, they would actually pour it on the altar, on the offering itself as it was being burnt up. Um, and there's a lot of people have a lot of ideas of what's the significance of the drink offering. The scripture doesn't really give us much clarity on that. It just kind of assumes that we know what a drink offering is and why you would do it. Pagans, of course, believe that the food that they were offering was food that the God was going to eat and the drink was what the God was going to drink. Of course, we know we're not feeding, they weren't feeding God when they were offering sacrifices in the temple. They were symbolic. What were they symbolic of? What was the pouring out? Well, one of the things that many see is that the pouring out of Jesus' blood was the drink offering. When the blood poured from his body on the cross, that that was the drink offering alongside of the sin offering of offering himself on the cross. Eh, maybe, I don't know. You know, I, I get real careful about those kinds of things because it might sound really good, but if the Scripture doesn't say it and confirm it, how do I really know if that's right? You know, so interesting. Might be, and there, it, it, it's an interesting picture to go by. 